Morning, bet lickers. Is it morning or afternoon? I'm not sure. 11.40. Okay, it's still morning, technically. So, I was listening to... Um, Aaron Go. He mentioned me without name in a video. And he made me see something really beautiful about myself. He talked about me. About how I use my burden. How I use my pain as a teacher. I have no insurance, and you guys all know they don't give out pain drugs, which I wouldn't want anyway. And nothing really helps. Cigarettes, they help. The edibles kind of. Help me relax into it so that I can get where I need to be while I'm in pain. And, um, I didn't really know what I was doing until Aaron said. And that's what I'm doing. It is a teacher. I don't have a choice. I can't just go get fixed. I don't have the money or the insurance. And I don't trust people. I need a chiropractor though. And I'm going, I'm going to go. But I've been keeping up with my progress by MRIs. Cause it's been two years. And, um, the last time I went to emergency room, I was screaming for hours before they shot me up with some morphine. And they did another MRI, which I told you guys showed that, um, I had reversed the spondylolisthesis from a grade three to four to a grade two to three. And it had significant changes shown on the MRI that were different in the um, discs and stuff. And there was a lot of big words that I had to look up on that paper, on the, um, the reading. And it took me two years, and it devastates me to think that it would take me four more to get back to normal. That I would have to bear this four more years. Maybe I won't. But my mom told me nothing lasts forever. Except love. And, um, this is really hard to talk about. Because I didn't realize what I was doing. It didn't feel noble or special or grand. It feels like a burden. 
it feels dark. It feels lonely. It's physically excruciating and devastating. And it could be traumatizing to some people. But I don't want my brain to di just disintegrate. I don't want my brain to melt down. I want to stay whole. Because I'm not done. I came here to help people. To comfort people. Who are hurting. To be a mom. A wife, a friend, a sister. I have all of that. Except I'm unable to work right now. And even if I was rich, I would do it for free. Because he brings me so much goodness. To hold hands with people. To hug them. To love them. To show them their strengths. And bring them some positivity to their life. Even when there's no hope at all, it seems. I want to tell you two little stories real quick. As quick as I possibly can. The first story. Um, a year after... Um... Was it a year? Yeah, a little over a year after the injury happened. I kept telling my husband, I have to go to the ocean. I have to go to the ocean. I have to go to the ocean because it's going to heal me. I don't know if i got to swim in it or if i got to bury myself in the sand. I've got to go talk to the goddess of the sea. We drove four hours to the closest beach on the coast it was packed and it was full of litter and I was devastated because I hurt so bad that I couldn't pick up the litter because that's what I do too I don't wait till Earth Day I love to pick up trash Because to me, it's like somebody throwing trash at my mom. When I see littering, it's horrible. It's devastating to me. I'm one of those people that cut up my little six-pack plastic things or whatever. I cut every hole that I, I cut it up in little bitty pieces. And everybody that knows me always lays it on the counter if they have one. Ain't no better than to throw it in the trash, because I'll snap them like a turtle, let me tell you. Okay, so. We drove seven more hours. I mean, we drove three more hours. It was seven in total. Down to a beach called Mustang Island. On the coast of Texas. It's, it's my favorite place. It's kind of private, because it's owned by the state. And so it's usually very clean and... Um, it's not very crowded because, of course, you have to follow state laws and um, people don't want to do that because they want to drink and they want to do this or that, period. I don't drink, so I'm not worried about it. And if I did, they wouldn't be able to stop me anyway, so <laughs> a rebel without a cause, I'm telling you. Anyway, it was shut down because of the hurricanes. So we drove north up the beach another hour and finally found a place. But it wasn't what I wanted. But it's okay. So I had picked up a half a dozen beautiful sunflowers. And I, I made them into a beautiful bouquet for the goddess Ren, the Scandinavian goddess of the sea, 
to some, she's brutal. But I went there with a clear heart. <laughs> I raised my arms up to her and called her energy to me. And I shivered as if a blizzard had hit me in the back. She picked me up and made me into an albatross. She told me I had to spread my wings and flow with the current, become the current, and to breathe, to stay aflight in the current. At that time, I knew nothing about albatross, except it was a bird. And I flew, and she flew with me. And I asked her, without speaking. The whole thing took place without speaking words. I asked her to heal me. And she said no. As devastated as I was, I stayed aflight and I listened. She said, You'll heal yourself in time. You will learn to flow. for a long period of time. You will become the albatross. And so I've been studying the albatross. And when it rains, I go outside with just my skin. And I put my head down under my wings and my wings up high to catch the flow of air current. And once again, even for a moment, I become the albatross. Do you know that the albatross is almost never on land? They only go to the land to breed and to nest. And the only time they socialize is when they're breeding in breeding season. Some of the albatross breeds are extinct and some are in trouble of becoming extinct. And there's only so many thousands of them left all together, all the breeds. Yes, they fly without barely a whip of their wing. They stay in this magical current that's between the ocean and the sky, more close to the ocean. There's a certain air current there, and it uses that current to its advantage, and it flies all day, and when it needs replenishment, it feeds on the surface of the water. It may take you a minute. there's a lesson there and I got it I want to tell you another story about Jesus Christ I believe the story is true 
And even if it's not true, it's a beautiful story. There was a man from Galilee. This is my version. And his sole purpose was to spread love and goodness, charity, humbleness, healing, unity. He loved to gather the masses and tell them stories, beautiful stories. It doesn't matter if it's true. I believe that they are. Maybe they've been changed a lot. But I think the main points are still there. But this man knew what was going to happen to him. But he stayed in the flow. Because he knew his purpose. Because he knew who he was. He wanted to be an example to the people. He knew he would be betrayed. He knew that he'd be beat, hung, and killed. And he stayed in the flow. He didn't heal himself like he did so many. He didn't complain. He didn't boast. He wasn't proud. He just wanted to love. And if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. I will heal and I will rise higher than the albatross. I will become the eagle. And that is very satisfying.